13, and it just allows the Ferrari to just breeze past the Renault. Holtzman is in the lead of things on the last lap. He's all over the gearbox for the Avatari. Matt slowing down to let this go. Vickhouse got into the back of the back marker. He's out. Really tight. There is a move. Here goes Derek on the inside into turn one. A little bit of a bump. There's a big issue. There's a massive snap. Cactus is off, Dirk has just slid all the way into turn two. But Yam is obviously pushing right now, he's using a lot of ERS here, he wants to get this move done as quickly as he physically can, and he does get the move. This can be really dangerous on turn three on the outside, goes Adam, and it's a very good move. The engines are revving, the lights are on, the look down to turn one is giving these hearts an extra beat, Unicorn, and things are about to go dark. Beer goes on out on the inside into turn one on the racing board. And look at the traction strip. And as Azir now weaving across the line is going to take the win here in Montreal. Don't tell me he's going to go for it. Oh, yes, he is. What a move, Unicorn. Put that to music. Here we go. The Misfits are back. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Tuesday Evening Action. It is time for the Tier 3 Racing Division, and joining me all the way from Spain for the action as usual, Mr. Alejandro Bitto, how are you doing? It's time for Spa. Hello, Sirfio. I'm doing very good. Very excited, of course. It's a, well, a uh, very good track to see racing here, and I think uh, this can be really promising, of course, as always. 19 turns here, Spa Frankershamp, Belgium, a very iconic circuit in the Formula One calendar, a very, very fast racing circuit, a long racing circuit, and well, it's been host to so many moments in Formula One history over the course of history, and well, next week we'll be going to another iconic circuit in Italy for round five as well. Following that, Suzuka, then Silverstone, it's just a very wild and explosive calendar that we have here we also visit Azerbaijan, Hungary, Singapore, France, as well as Spain, where we go to your home circuit, Alex. And then we have Austria, Mexico, and then the finale of Brazil. A very, very action-packed calendar. A very action-packed calendar indeed. And we've seen nothing but action from all of these racing divisions so far, as this is now our third race of the week. Crampy is leading this division with... 50 points, 7 points ahead of Jean right now. It's a very narrow margin here in this championship for the title. You have Carbon Racer there in third position. He is 6 points behind Jean. And you have Gabby Zim, Dark, Wavy, Artex, Bacro, Wisp, Daniel Monaf. Almost everyone has scored points on this grid. The two McLarens yet to score points in this championship in this season for the Tier 3 division, Alex. They are scoreless on the Constructors' Championship board. Hanoz and Sima, they have work to do. Rackety has work to do in the Haas. And Relax, he is also scoreless. Williams leading that championship 70 points as it's Crampy and Wavy. 50 and 20 between them. Mercedes with 45 as Carbon Racer and Maka have done some teamwork there. And it's AlphaTauri rounding out your top three for the Constructors' Championship here as we head into round four. And well, with that, we're just about ready to go racing in spa yeah as we're waiting for some drivers still doing uh some changes in the connections and everything and i think um as i talk we might be ready for uh, to go right now well that is always excellent to have everybody into the lobby as well we have some reserves on the grid today not a full grid of reserves however one thing i want to mention is that we haven't had any rain dynamics come through in Spa yet, and it's something that I have wanted to see. The Tier 2 division, after two back-to-back -back races of rain, they finally had themselves a dry spell for their race yesterday, and we had a great campaign in the Tier 4 run as well. Of course, the replays for both of those races are now on the YouTube channel, and I can tell you, the America's Tier 2 race, Alex, was absolutely thrilling. There was so much fighting, and I think that we're going to see much of the same here in this Tier 3 division today. One other question is whether or not we're going to be getting a surplus of safety cars today, which is something that we've seen in history of the MRL. And uh, we'll have to see how these Tier 3 racers can tackle this grid today. Spa has been one of the dramatics places there for MRL. I remember season two, I think only nine finished <laughs> at race. And that's what, that was, I think, the, the same week as I joined uh, MRL, of course, as league. 
and it was a little bit dramatic, let's say, uh, yesterday, as you said, uh, on Tier 2 Americas, we had very good racing there, as I saw some clips of some drivers really battling hard on the Camel Straight on Lacom, and of course, I hope to see that again, but this time, of course, on Tier 3, with these drivers that have been, uh, of course, having some battles, as you said, on Bahrain, on Zambord, these first rounds, and Rush as well, and they have been providing a lot, a lot, a lot of entertaining to us. Yeah, they have really been providing a ton of action in these races now, 20 seconds counting down. We're just loading into the session here around Spa, and it's going to be 18 minutes of qualifying ahead of 22 laps of racing. And, well, it's 10 seconds, Alex, until we really get this roll of the dice. Everybody's loading in now. We're just waiting on Dan there. And, well, once everyone's in, we'll see the weather report. Once we get the weather report, the intensity just begins to build as this qualifying gets underway. And here we have it now. Loading is complete. And we are going to get ourselves into Belgium. Things looking quite overcast right now. However, it doesn't look damp. So I'm thinking we may see weather dynamics come. I'd like to see weather dynamics come. Maybe in the qualifying, maybe in the race. It Well, it doesn't. it's not raining, of course, as we can see. We'll see some drivers now as they load in, of course, to this session. But, of course, right now it's dry. I don't think nobody has said. Uh, yeah, dry, dry is a report from Matt, probably engineering uh, some of his friends there on Alfa Romeo. And, of course, everyone on dry tires preparing, except Jose Manuel and Colors with the mediums, that probably will try a lap on that tire compound. Of course, as the first lap, as the banker, uh, you don't really want to put everything there on the track you want to reserve a little bit on your pocket and of course i think those two drivers will try to do it uh, right now well, a lot of traffic you can see at sector one yeah it's really busy everybody's already on the move and the first driver to jump out of the pit lane is the alfa romeo of wisp and wisp of course he has had some good results this season he's had a podium this season we'll see what he's able to do here in spa in the alfa romeo and Taking us through this grid now, we have Max O'Connor, Gabism, we have Kane Gitchvan, Carbon Racer, Lars, Dan, Crampy, Hanoz, Jose Manuel, Cotters, Jean, Back Row, we have Driver DNB, Dark, Daniel Monaf, Epic, Maka, Polypunk, again Wisp, and Rackety for the 20 skilled racers here to take up the circuit for Tier 3 racing. And it will be Wisp and that Alfa Romeo to give us a first potential lap here around this iconic spa Francochamps circuit and man oh man yesterday in that tier 2 division you mentioned some great battles we saw some very very wild exchanges just heading in through Eau Rouge a little bit of uh, chicken if you want to call it that first uh, to break scenarios like that and we'll have to see if this race presents any of them a lot of these drivers in this man. grid have raced here before with us yeah, I mean, a lot of side-by-side -side battle you can have there. The three wide, almost four wide we saw on 2018 Spa, Franco Tam's Grand Prix, of course, on real life. On F1, as we see Wisp starting his lap, going to Lazar's turn one, the right-hander. You can really lose the rear on braking. And you really need to nail the exit because all of this energy, all of this speed that you carry from turn one, you will be having it till turn seven. So it's six corners flat out, as you can see now. Erosion rally on section, opening DRS side to the right. Wisp on that Alfa Romeo, trying his first lap on this qualifying with the soft compound. Now until it come really, really easy to spin that car on the inside curve. He avoided it completely, completely to not have any rotation that can cause any issue. He had issues on Zambord two weeks ago, retiring on qualifying, he started on the back. Then he did a great comeback to the podium. But right now, on Rochelle's now into no name, Really maximizing the exit, as you can see there, putting that wheel into the AstroTurf. Into Puan, we see the car going a little bit wide, and that's invalidation for Wisp. Yeah, that's where we've seen drivers previously have invalidation problems. Daniel Monaf and Hanoz have come together, and I'm not entirely sure what has happened between the pair of them. But there has been a penalty awarded, and I think it was a grid penalty. It was indeed, I saw Daniel Monaf taking a five place grade penalty, sorry. And as you say as well, I know he's taking one 
of that. So probably contact between them. Wisp won't be setting a lap, I think. Will Rackety. be Rocket C. Now, yeah. instead of Stop Cicane, trying to put the power down as soon as possible, opening the RS to finish this first lap. It's a 41.7 for the Haas driver. An epic seven cents faster already. Just for a little bit of perspective, ladies and gentlemen, poll times yesterday coming in from tiers four and America's tier two. We had Polypunk on pole position in the tier four division yesterday. Alex, he ran a 140.9. And then yesterday in the Tier 2 division, it was a 140.6. Drivers today will have to see what they can do to try and best those times as they came into Spa today. Epic already a 140.091. Things are looking good here as the opening runs without the Super Track Evolution. And quick. A lot of time is coming down now, as you said, Polypunk, 40.9 was his pole position yesterday now. 41.4 on his first one, Crumpy, two tenths behind Epic on second place. He has been practicing these last hours, let's say, on that Williams. Trying to keep that gear of the championship, of course, he has a significant gap to second place. But still, of course, he needs to protect that one. Can I reserving uh, for his teammate Tema, but he's from tier 4, as well as Polypunk who is doing the same task and uh, Lars on the Williams replacing Wavy. So three drivers that they, they, they're not scared. They, they, they are not scary. Let's say like they are not scared to be here and they will try to do the, the best thing on another division, a higher division. But of course we have seen Polypunk there on the top on tier four. And I think he can do brilliant things on tier three. Wisp jumping into seventh position there, 41.740. A few other drivers there, Dark, 43.127 on the medium compound tire. Ten drivers setting laps here in the session. Jose Manuel in the Red Bull is on the move down the hill. Oh, he's just tapped it over that curbing. And that is going to spoil his lap. Yeah, that's a mistake he has aborted. Of course, invalidation for him. I think he was the only driver flying at that moment. We'll jump on Carbon Racer. I think at the mo well, he's out of field, so he'll be jumping into the pits. A lot of drivers going into the pits at this stage of qualifying. As you can see on the right part of that time tower. A long lap around here in Spa, of course, is going to present less opportunities to get laps across. Max O'Connor. Seems to be pushing. He's got that fuel light on, though. I have a feeling he'll just be making his way into the pit lane. Yeah, he's dropped it here, undoubtedly. And, well, everyone getting that first lap in, valid, is going to be crucial. Ten minutes remaining already here in the session. Lots of drivers on an out lap as well. The bottom five, John Backrow, driver, DMB, Daniel Monofamaka not setting a lap yet. They are on their way to do that. I think Maka will be the first one of these five to start the lap on that Mercedes. Right now, last place, but of course, as soon as he gets the lap done there, uh, of course, he will be jumping at least to P11. But we'll see what he can do because Maka has been performing really, really good, not only last season, but on this one. So we'll see what he can do. Mercedes now coming out of the sauce as we come through. You can see Carbon Racer, his teammate, on the way out of the pit lane. Now we push through up this very iconic section, the Eau Rouge Redion Complex, and then we will flow through into the Kemmel Strait to find our rear wing wide open with the DRS drag reduction system. Rackety pulling off to the inside there. Mac trying to pull a little bit of slip as we come through down into Lacombe. I think that section really easy to spin now into Rochelle's Rebush. Someone likes to call it on, the, on those two ways. Now into No Name, avoiding a little bit that Astro Turf on the left hand side. Not doing the same line as we saw Wisp doing before. Now into Pawn, getting that car, but it needs to turn. Wisp went a little bit wide and validate. Maka, keep it valid. Now into 12 and 13. Really, really difficult turners. 
Now to finish Sector 2 and start with Sector 3 almost flat out, except was stop Chicane, of course, now in Stabilo, a little bit wide, almost going off track, but Maka keeps it valid. Seems like a very tidy lap for him. Into 17 is Blanchimon. Flat out on these cars into boost stop Chicane. That's gonna be what's gonna be from Maka on this on his first lap I might even of be the afternoon. Top five here. Ooh, he just missed the top five there. 41.695. Gap right now, so first down to 10th, 1.9. That's because Cotters did a not so good lap on the mediums. It's actually eight tenths to max. Any amount of as well on a lap. Now, the last driver on this tower. I have a yellow flag, but I think it was someone just letting someone by on his fast lap. Then amount of exit in sector two, almost invalidating there. It's 12.9. He's split. Seems like a very fast one. Probably even gonna be fighting there with Crampy, I would raining. say. Oh, yes, it's raining. I just noticed I was double checking that I wasn't losing my mind there, but you can see a little bit of raindrops flashing through into the cockpit of this Aston Martin, and these drivers that have not set their best times in the session are really going to be in trouble. Daniel Monaf's going to be happy. Oh, he's safe. Yeah, that's he's a nice He's safe, but almost took pole position. It was... What? It's nothing. There's no difference almost on those times. It's only 11 milliseconds between them. And if only those drops of rain were not shown at his sector 3, probably we would be seeing another thing. They don't want to pull position probably, but right now he will be on front row. Sometimes going at the tower, dark 16th place as Drainer DMB training on mediums. They Epic. Monaf actually spinning. Epic. Further to his, his lap time there, into the 140.891 zone. Hano is pushing in the McLaren now. We mentioned the McLaren scoreless in the championship thus far. Looking to do some work today. Coming through the bus stop chicane for Hano's to the line. You can see things are really slowing down on this circuit as he wasn't even able to get ahead of driver on the medium compound tires. Wisp taking the exit of no name, the esports line that is like to be called. Wisp going wide but not invalidating. A little bit lucky there. He's on 10th place. He was improving on sector 1, but I don't think he will be improving on sector 2 as this track is starting to dump a little bit there with the water. And uh, now we'll see. I don't think he's improving as he goes a little bit wide. It's 3 tenths down on red for the Alfa Romeo. Some yellow flag shown on the map on sector 1, sector 2 and sector 3. But of course, that rain is loading things down for some drivers. I don't think Wisp will be able to gain time on Sector 3. But 10th place is one of the worst places to start a race. And he knows that he wants to improve that. He's opening the arrest on last corner after boost up Cicane. Yeah, and he nothing. will not be improving. There's no That's a shame for him. This is so tough. To find improvement when the conditions have just kind of been taken out of your control. You've got Jose Manuel now. Dan, Jose Manuel, and Jean, they're going to more than likely have a bit of a shootout here for this final 18th slot. Because I don't think any of them are going to be able to improve over uh, over Hanoz. Well, it could be very tired right now, but I think the rain is starting to fall down. We're seeing retirements Harder. start to come out of the pit lane now from drivers Crampy. Max O'Connor and Cotters have called it quits as they know the conditions more than likely have been spoiled for the remainder of the session. I don't think we could see anything hit back to dry. He has aborted. He knows there's no grip to improve that one actually, but he finishes. If he finishes that one, he will be, of course, ahead of Dan. I don't know if he knows that. I don't know if he wants to choose. That, that side of the track to start with. We don't know what's happening in his mind right now. I don't know if he will be finishing, but we'll see now on the last chicane. He will be jumping into the pits. He doesn't even care about that place, that free place. Sliding on the entry of the pit lane. Four minutes left, and I think this might be the result, him. Yeah, I think, you, I think you're hitting the nail on the head and saying that this could very well be the final result of our qualifying session here. Jean looking to maybe push himself 
to get a valid time. At the very least, Alex, it would give him 18th position if he sets a time. Right now, gap from first down to 14th position, one second. All of those drivers setting times on the soft compound. The driver at DMB, I think everyone has set that time with the softs. John will come through driver here. DMB selected that one. John going to come through now, set 18th position. Surely a 44.028, and that is really giving us a perspective of where the softs are landing themselves in these conditions. There's not a lot of grip at all anymore. And so now John will have to finish out his in-lap back row on an out-lap, surprisingly enough. And someone said it was going to be dry dry, but right now I'm... Probably nobody expected this, of course. Uh, dry dry was the weather report from Matt. Probably a little bit mistaken there. We hope there's a little bit of mistake there on the race and it's not only dry. <laughs> and we can see some action probably at the end of that campaign. But right now, qualifying has been interesting because when you when you have rushed to set that lap time, it can happen things like this. How someone without a lap, Dan without a lap. Jan who won on Russia, if I'm not mistaken, is now uh, not on the last row, but almost on the last row. It will be on 18th He's the place. the last to get a valid lap Jared. in at the very least, Alex. And so coming off of a race win, I mean, I have to say the conditions didn't really give us an appropriate picture of what he's capable of. There goes a big crash back row in the slick conditions on the slick tires says, I'm going to go for a bit of a cruise through a rouge. Majority of the drivers in the session now having retired the car back row most definitely will be retiring the car after a shunt like that. That was a that was a huge one on a rose another one and that's Dan I think having the same mistake. Yes indeed it's the same mistake for the other Alpha Tower reserving today. I think he was only trying to set a lap. It seems like it's not raining that much anymore, or it's me. I think I think you're you're dreaming. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm dreaming. Never mind. I, I guess it's some quality issues. Well, we have some game. drivers on outlaps, <laughs> and it, it it's it's interesting to see it because the conditions aren't going to give anybody an opportunity to get improvement here. The only driver I can see getting, but even then, I think the conditions are too bad for Dan to maybe jump his teammate here. They won't be able to. It's DRS disabled already, so. No way. No, there's no way. Uh, probably not, not even fighting the place with Jose Manuel. Jose Manuel is already retired, so it's there's no point to keep that car on track. Right now, three left on this qualifying. It's Carbon Racer on Pitts back row. Coming back from that shunt. And then, as well, probably learning a little bit. Because right, right now, I don't know what he was trying. Probably, yes tried to get in some places but I don't think he was aware that he was not able to do that as uh, the conditions are getting worse and worse well one thing I can say for certain is uh, this session has been as you said quite unique quite dynamic it's been interesting to see but we can tell you one thing epic is going to be starting this race in spa on pole position with daniel monoff alongside him on the front row the separation on the script quite tight throughout and then it's gonna continue he wants to set a lab at least we'll see what the conditions say but no drs will be for him just look how much he's lighting there on turn one putting as well uh wheel on the grass the traction is just Almost impossible on that dry compound on a wet surface. Now down into Rush, he will have to yield a little bit because otherwise that car will not have any grip. He's not invalidated because the car is going so slow that the game doesn't think that yeah, you're gaining you time on that section. This is the only driver now, Mr. Dan, who will be looking to come through and set a lap. He's set a purple sector one as he is the only car on circuit. And he has retired the car, so that is it for Dan here at the end of qualifying. See, he perceived a little bit of downgrade on the traction, and therefore he retired the car. So this will be the result for qualifying. I think it was epic, of course. Again, it's not the first time he took a pole position. 
and probably not the last time. And of course, we have to remember that Daniel Molnar took a five place grid penalty. It was a very good effort from him to put that car on Pitsu, knowing that he has that penalty. So we'll see how it's going to work for him. Yeah, very, very interesting qualifying rain coming in to really rain it out at the end there. And well, it is a 40.891, the tier three pull time here. Daniel Monoff there at 41 1, as you mentioned, five place grid penalty. We'll see him thrown back. Crampy qualified third quickest. It was a 41 2 1 9 separation from first down this grid all the way. 14th position it is one second, and I am extremely excited for this as we have been. We have been tipped off to have dry running in this race. That being said, we were tipped off to have dry running in the qualifying, and that turned wet. So we'll have to see how things can do. Crampy right now looking to continue his championship lead. He's been driving really good, really good. Um, no mistakes almost from him. At least I don't remember any mistake from him. Probably, he, I think he had collected an incident on Russia on the start, but after that he That's recovered right. to P3. But that I don't, I don't even think it him. was his fault. Yeah, always, always placing the car where he wants. And now, well, leading the championship of Team 3 will be really, really, really difficult. Dark at the moment, if someone can tell him. There, he's had some kind of itch, issue, Dark, so we can get him back in. There we go, and it's the same... It's the same potential... weather, I think. We have that overcast condition, and I, I, I dare I say... Alex, if we get a safety car, I wonder if we see rain today because that safety car can prolong this race for such a such a time with the long lap. Oh yeah, surely can, surely can. Safety car, going behind safety car, it's a really, really long lap, more than two minutes, of course. And uh, if we if we have a couple, probably if we have one, probably it can, of course, as you said, um, provide some rain because probably not on the weather right now, not on the weather forecast. Uh, we, we don't have uh, rain, but uh, probably later, as I said, extending that that race time, probably we can have some at the end. And if it's in the end, uh, with a couple of laps to go, with a track like this, it's seven kilometers long, probably can provide even more action. Well, welcome into session, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to formation. We are away on the, well, the formation lap ahead of our 22 race campaign. Epic, Crampy, Polypunk, your top three after we saw Daniel Monaf take a five place penalty from second. Carbon Racer in the Mercedes will start fourth. Gabizim is here in the Red Bull. He will start fifth. Kane, Gitchvan in sixth. It's Daniel Monaf in seventh after qualifying second and taking that penalty, slotting him back five positions. Maka will start in eighth position with the Mercedes squad. It's Rackety in ninth wisp in the alfa romeo he will start 10th and his teammate cotters will start right behind him on the medium compound tires so a big strategy differential there between the pair of them back row will start in 12th he has opted for the softs in the alpine max o'connor 13th position with lars right behind him in the williams they have selected the medium compound tires dark in 15th position we saw him disconnect hopefully we can get him back in shortly he is on the softs, driver DNB on the mediums in 16th, and I'm wondering if Dark didn't get a chance to pick his tires. A nose, so. 17th position, softs for him, Jean right behind him, softs as well for last week's race winner in the Alpha Tauri. Dan in the other Alpha Tauri will start on the mediums on the back row of this grid with Mr. Jose Manuel and the partnering Red Bull. And that is how the grid will line up ahead of 22 laps of racing around Spa Francorchamps for the Tier 3 Round 4 action of Season 5. This is going to be really, really interesting. I think Dark is back on the session. I don't know if he has been able to select that car on 15th place. don't think the strategy was on his hands today, so he will be probably committed to that soft to medium strategy, their original for a lot of these drivers on the top 10 as you can see back row as well dark hanos and john selecting the soft as first compound driver the mb having an issue 
Oh, here we go. Epic Crampy Polly Punk, our top three now as Daniel Monaf, after setting that second position, dropped back to seventh. And, uh, well, here we go now, Alex. It's time for racing. Polly Punk on the line, looking for a good launch. Five red lights here in Spa. The lights are out. The drivers are away. Crampy with a look at already Epic. Looking for that outside line. Can a Carbon Racer wheel to wheel? Everybody looking very tight through turn one. Someone's had to go wide there. It's Crampy pushed off wide, and it's very interesting to see that already coming out of the Williams. Carbon Racer wheel to wheel with Daniel Monaf. We come up a rouge. Things are very tight between these two. It's still wheel to wheel for these guys, and man, oh man, they made it through clean. Wow. What has gone on here, oh. Wisp? Right now, nice. Daniel Monaf. Can a drop back a bit? Maka looking for Rackety. Look at all this action coming down through into Lacom. Man, oh man, were things tight down. Up a rouge through Radion and the Camel straight. A little bit of a shake here between back row and Cotters. And Daniel Monaf having contact at the exit of Lacom. Now on the back of the grid, both of them. And Daniel Monaf is actually out. I don't know if that was contact Germany or some issue on his net. But right now he's last out of the session. We'll see if he can join back. Yeah, I don't know if it was a net issue. Get into an issue like that and you see someone leave, your own mind goes one place and hopefully we can get him back in quickly because penalties will be awarded otherwise. And Mr. Dan right now on the rear of Max O'Connor, less than two tenths. We've got so much action here in this grid already. You love to see it. Polly Punk Epic are leading this race. Daniel Monaf, well, maybe it was just a disconnection. Maybe it was a network issue, and well, you want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, and right now, Epic's taking benefit over his teammate and Polly Punk as they're wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, the two Ferraris, and man, oh man, we're just going to hope that that was team orders, because you don't want to see that too much. There was yellow flag that was Hanos having a mistake, now Lars as well, really, really close. It's Robert DMB on the outside, both on the mediums, let's say if Darks is going to, sorry, Lars is going to, on the inside, no, he's not going to dive. There, driver DMB holding. We have, of course, the timing issues as always on lap two. DRS is not enabled, but still some racing there because the leaders are really, really close between each other. John taking a position on Jose Manuel. These two racers started at the rear end of this grid right now, and they've made up at the very least one row considering Dana Monaf and her nose. Carbon Racer is into the pit lane. Epic. Oh, that's John. No! And that's as well, Maka. No! No, it's not Maka. I there can't was get a view else. right now. I can't get a view. I'm trying to find who this was that John came together with. The timing tower not giving me the ability to select the appropriate cars. Every time I try to select a car, it switches numbers. Yeah, it's really, really, really problematic. Virtual safety car deployed. But it was John contact with, I think it was an Alpine probably from back row, as they were really, really close, but I'm not sure about that. And right now, Daniel Monaf was jumping there on board with him, and, well, it was just John on the outside barrier of Rally John, just, of course, terminally damaged. The race winner from Russia now out of this race. That is extremely unfortunate for John after a race win, most definitely, and his qualifying not going the best way. Epic right now leading this race ahead of his teammate Polly Punk. It's the Ferraris 1-2 and Gabism in the Red Bull isn't going to be too thrilled about it, but he is within that one second range, albeit the timing tower is in a world of its own. We know what's going on. It's fixed, but Polly Punk lost that place on, on first lap. I don't think he wants to compromise that championship for his teammate. He only wants to keep that 1-2 and two for him. And of course, Epic because they want to maximize the point. Remember, Polypunk is from tier four, and right now, well, just keeping that one two for Ferrari. Diamond Tower right now giving us the wrong data. I don't know if you're getting that issue over on your end, but we have some pretty large intervals in our top four. Same issues, the same issues as Kanai now. Really close on back row. He'll have DRS. I think back row won't have to defend. Well, yes, he has, but Kanai is so close to him that he has a slipstream power, and now he will try to go on the outside. Back row defending the inside. The Alpine driver holding that breaking zone, but Kanai is going to spin. He's not going to save it because that curve is just going to put himself into the grass. Now he has recovered that one, but the rears are really, really hot, and he has lost five places on that exchange. That was a very, very unfortunate situation to find yourself in for 
The McLarens not going to be thrilled about that. He had a little bit of an opportunity to get those wheels lined up to save it. We saw him try, and it was just, as you said, the way he came around that turn, the momentum onto the grass, and once you touch that grass, you're on... You're a passenger, really. There's not much you can do to slow down the car there. Daniel Monaf yeah, now surely he, with he an issue it, outside uh, of the pit lane. Daniel Monaf had an issue in Stavalot on last lap. Now an issue outside of the pit lane. Those hard tires not... But now then, okay. Max O'Connor, wheel-to-wheel as we come through into Blanchemont. Max O'Connor on the mediums. That's huge contact. My, oh, my. That is one of the biggest collisions I have ever seen in this game. What the heck? That is that is hands down the biggest crash I've ever seen in Formula One gaming ever. Period. Nope. Not even gonna sugarcoat it. Boom. Boom. Someone find me a better one. Not a chance. I'm speechless. What was that? What was that? Dan and Max O'Connor having contact. They locked wheels. They went into the barrier. Then they bounced back from the barrier to the racing line. More drivers collected, not terminally. They have safety cards to change their wings, but <laughs> I still don't know what I've seen. That was one of the craziest crashes, I think, um, most of us have ever seen in a Formula One league race. That was yeah. wild. Thankfully for the Ferraris, the safety car didn't come just ahead of them. So they will have that lap with Delta. And probably they will use it to pit for hearts, as a lot of drivers are doing. That started with the soft, of course, because the medium starters, like Colors Driver, DMB, Hosman, and Wisp, still staying on. Sorry, not Wisp. Wisp actually putting the mediums from the soft and probably even trying to go to the end. But three drivers there staying. The top four staying out because they didn't have the chance to pit, but surely they will use it on their favor, selecting the mediums or the hearts. So we will see what they choose because it's going to be really interesting as we can see Wisp that is on the mediums. Wow. Three drivers out of this race, lap four. We're going to be seeing who comes in here. I think it's going to be all these soft runners coming in. No, Polypunk has oh, stayed Polypunk. out. Oh, oh. That's interesting. That's huge. That's massive. That's very interesting to say the least. I don't know what this Ferrari is doing. I think the double stack yeah. is better for you here. Yes. But at the same time, I remember watching... Two McLarens on one, on first place and two and second place, double stacking second driver that fall a little bit down the order, the because of the double stacking will have some issues there with the traffic, so probably probably Pang just just trying to avoid some issues with the traffic, trying to extend this first stint and later on putting the mediums because right now well these drivers that have fitted are putting the mediums but I'm not sure if they can go to the end. Probably Polypang first doesn't want to, uh, to double stack, second doesn't want to be in traffic, and third, he only wants to be on fresher tires at the end. It's not a long pit stop, so I think he probably can recover a little bit of that time. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see how that unravels here. And now, safety car conditions after... What a crash. I, I, I am still trying to wrap my head around that one. I don't know. I don't know if you're like me right now. I'm trying to think about how that occurred. Not not the actual crash, but I'm trying to think about that situation and how it, how it got to where it ended, right? <laughs> you're coming through that turn. It was a touch of contact, and then it was just uh, sayonara, and now... Safety car out, Alex. Such a shuffle in this race. It really has been such a shuffle. Yeah, Aston Martin and Alpha Tori not having the best race so far. Of course, only five laps. And, uh, but still, still not having the best luck. I think one more lap will be on this uh, safety car train. 
I don't think Polypan will be will be pitting now. Surely not. I think it would be a mistake. Pit. Yeah, big mistake. I think that safety cars, given given we've had a VSC deployment, a full safety car deployment now, you have a restart um, where you're gonna have these drivers pushing through up Eau Rouge. If it's me, in, and I'm not, and I'm saying this with, I'm not trying to be negative about all the racers, but I'm just saying there's so much intensity, there's so much pressure that comes with a safety car restart. You're wanting to get those positions, especially if you're on the fresher tires. If, if you're going through Eau Rouge, ready on, on these safety car restarts, and Alex, we've seen it. You could find yourself in trouble quick. You could find another safety car deployed. And if Polypunk knows, this could be good Dr. for him, right? He's in the best position. He's in the best racing position right now for a safety car restart around Spa. And I say this because he's going to be in control, right? He's going That's to be in control just... until, at the very least, until Lacom. It depends on him, uh, only himself, so... And not the, the the situations of other drivers. Of course, some some drivers can lose their breaking point and probably go straight like Boras and Hungary, but not like that. I think Polban has this under control at this moment and wanted to have this under control, at least on the safety car restart. Of Daniel Monaf has had an incident on Rallyon. As I said, not the best day for him. He's on the hearts, and I think he won't be able to pit and catch the queue again because the safety car most likely will be on this lap but polypunk not wanting to risk anything on traffic probably even hoping for another safety car and i don't blame him because i don't blame, I don't him, blame him at all because he would have been probably on p9 on p10 and behind even hard runners so we'll see what he can do from here I think back to the Ben the Bear safety car restart. Do you remember? Here in Spa, there was an endurance race. Ben the Bear took part. And if you don't know Ben, he's a very quick driver in the Misfits. I was behind him. You were behind him? Oh, yes. Do you remember when he started? Yes, yeah, 7-10. He... I think he gunned it just ahead of Blanchemont and caught everybody. Yes, he did. So, there is a very, very good... There it is, safety car coming in. We'll see what happens now. Polypunk is in control. Lights are off on the safety car and it's on the way in. Everybody looking to find some temperatures. It'll be easier for Polypunk than anyone else on the grid given he's on the softest tires. Still, there's there's some wear on those tires, so I don't know how much he will be able to take profit. And um, probably the the crossover between soft and mediums will be really really close, and probably a couple of laps. So right now, Polypan controlling this pace is locked on fourth gear, but right now putting the power down. But Colors is just behind him. I don't think he's gonna try the move. No, he's loading behind him. Polypan on first place, Colors on second. Driver the NBA. Do we have an exchange between Epic and Wisp and Epic? Net P1 right now because that's the battle for the win, I think. Epic and Wisp on the mediums till the end. That's the plan for them. Back oh! The exchanging. Oh! There was a bit of contact there. A bit of a snap coming out of back row. Fortunately, nothing major. It didn't look like any debris came off that car, but I wouldn't be shocked if there was a touch of damage. Cotter's on the rear polypunk near half second right now, and driver DNB wants to get through. Top four drivers right now all on their starting tires, making up significant positions except for polypunk. He is... Well, he's in a real tough spot, let's just say, as his strategy is questionable, and well, he needs to pull away from Cotters, driver DNB could be very well giving him an opportunity to do this if he puts Cotters under enough pressure. Look at that gap growing it's as like, the Ferrari pushes like... away. Oh, driver DNB really close, Cotters losing down for their own pull on. I don't know if he has damage, I don't think so, Cotters. They're going defensive, and now on the outside, driver DMB really, really close on 13 and 14 on campus. We'll see if he tries it. He has a lot of downforce compared to Cutters and that Alfa Romeo. And it's just on the back of him, Polypunk opening that DRS window already 1.3 and increasing. Minus sector after minus sector. And we have that gap that is coming down between the Alpine and the Alfa Romeo. 
and Epic as well that wants to gain some places at Jose Manuel as well, really close on this sub three. Here goes Gabby Zim looking at Wisp as we come into the chicane. A little bit of a lunge coming around the outside for the Red Bull. It's tight. There's a squeeze back through on the inside for the Red Bull. Six position for Gabby Zim. What's the exit like for the Alfa Romeo? Oh man, oh man, that was a very good move coming out of Gabby Zim. What a really, really stunning fireworks display that was. But he is coming back. Wisp is trying it again. Gabby Zim protecting the inside. And who's that? Is Crumpy just behind the leader of the championship. Uh -oh. Really, really close is Wisp. I'm Gabby Zim side by side. Gabby Zim just doesn't want to commit there. And Crumpy losing the rear, but he hopes that he's staying it there. Driver DMB and Colors having an exchange. It's Driver DMB just ahead. And Wisp just trying to protect that place. But Gabby Zim on the inside on the breaking point is so... Oh, oh, Gabby Zim oh, sliding oh. on the rear. Oh my god, is Gabby Zim lucky that didn't put him sidewards. Crampy's taking advantage right now. And man, oh man, Crampy pushing through. Jose Manuel has dropped a position into sixth. Wisp threw into fifth. Not sure what happened for Jose there. But Crampy really taking advantage of it, the very least one Red Bull right now. And Daniel Monaf is through on the inside of Hanoz, coming down through into No Name now. Special, special, but now, now right now Polypunk is really losing time on Driver DMB. I think Driver DMB with that DRS that he had on colors, now he has gained a lot of time in that for into well against that Ferrari, and it's four tenths, and that gap is decreasing. Polypunk not having the best juice out of those softs. And probably, I don't think he has to pit now, but it's going to be close because Robert Dib is really, really close. And the exit of Stabalot, he will try and blunt him on you. Oh, he has to yield a little bit. He doesn't want to commit there side by side. He's still very close between the Alpine and the Ferrari. Oh, and Polypang just lets out the Alpine by. It's around the outside of both top chicane. And it's going to be easy for him. He's up into P1. Robert Dib with a fantastic strategy. And I think Polypang is staying out. And Colors is going to be attacking him. Very, very intense racing here. Man, oh man, right now. Wisp just sitting here in fifth position. Jose Manuel is really, really tight behind him. Cotter's now getting through on Polypunk. Polypunk has been mugged by his teammate. And now is Polypunk going to drop the anchor for Wisp here? It's a Ferrari defensive position now for Polypunk. If you ask me, Epic looking at Cotter's. It's a drag race down Camel. We're coming through into Lacombe. Battery and utilization. DRS and utilization for the Ferrari. Cotters with a great straight line is going to hold this position as Wisp will push through. There's an Alfa Romeo it's off in car. Cotters. And what car. has happened to cause that? It's Daniel Monaf out. Hanos out. I think they have collided on a Radillion. Cotters has spun but saved it. Only come. Lost two places from Epic and Wisp, but I think Hanos and Daniel Monaf out of this race has caused a second safety car, and this can save a little bit Polypunk, not that much, because I think if he pits, he will be on the back of this grid anyway, but probably if other drivers pit as well, he won't be that far back, but still compromising a little bit his strategy. He lost three places, or no, four places in only two sectors, sector three and sector one from lap eight and lap nine. And that was really, really interesting because I think all the grip that he had on those soft just vanished at that moment because on a rush and a rally on, he was not able to take that flat out. He was not able to put the traction down at the exit of the source and he lost a lot of positions there, Polypunk. And I think he will be pitting shortly. Yeah, there's only one option for that Ferrari and it's to come in. The problem with this pit stop compared to the last one is they had a little bit of separation for that pit stop from where they were in the race. Now you've got this entire grid still in formation. Polypunk's gonna come in here and he's gonna be in a worse position, I feel, than when he would have taken that double stack. Cotters is coming in surely as he's still on his starting tire. But interestingly enough is that driver DNB has not come in. Neither has Jose Manuel and they're on their starting tires. And this to me is very bold, extremely bold. And I don't think it's the right call. I think that two safety cars, I think you're, you're comfortable there in, in taking a risk to maybe get that second safety car out here in Spa. But now I think you're tempting fate. I think the softs would have been the better tire to jump onto at this point in time. Yes, but the thing is, can you take it to the end? And if, well, if you can't take it to the end, you just put hards because a safety car like this of course, it's not in the best lap, on the, on the, well, on the best lap you can have it, but it still is a safety car that you can use to change uh, your compound. And Trevor DMB 
Jose Manuel as well, not sensing that Sire can be really compromising their strategy. I don't know if Softs can go to the end because it could be from lap 11, lap 12 will be green flag, so it's probably 11 laps on that tire. Will be a big stretch, I think. We saw Polypunk struggling on 8 lap old soft. And uh, probably they saw that and they saw that the soft were not working. But instead of putting soft, you can put hearts. Yeah, it's just the hearts here in comparison to these better... I don't know. I, I feel like Cotter is if he if he really turns up the car, you know, if he's able to turn up. He he's got these softs. He's gonna have a good fighting ability at the start. So so is Kane. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. It's a lot of strategy now play that's come in because of the VSC, because of the two safety cars, because of all of the issues that have presented themselves. You've got five drivers now out of this race. We're just about to cross into that halfway threshold as driver leads us into lap 11 you can see the safety car is staying out here as we go into lap 11 so it's more than likely going to be green flag on lap 12 unless the safety car gives us a late call but if it's not coming in with the entirety grid bunched up right now i think we're going to be going around one more lap yes i think so it will be really really late to call it now but I won't be surprised. I've seen it's, worse. It's, yeah, it's... Oh, Oof. that's not good Oof. for Jose Manuel. That's a five second and, for Crampy. And for him as well, yeah. I think they both took it, eh? Yeah. And Jose Manuel going into the pits now. He doesn't have anything to lose. He wants to serve it now as well. Crampy as well going I into the pits. I think this is smart. I think it's smart to just shave it. Oh, you, you have an no, opportunity. I don't think so. Well, Crampy gets so. onto can... softs, right? I don't, I don't know because someone else is putting the, the, the hearts, but the thing is, they both were well, not both because Crumpy, sorry, someone else didn't pit. Hold on a moment. But he's getting a wing change. Crumpy's getting a wing change. That makes sense, yeah. So he had to come in. They had to. Someone else is sliding a little bit on the exit. But yeah, someone else didn't have any other option that's serving, that's serving that five seconds on the pits. And it was either taking it now or later. And of course, he wants to take it now. But the thing is, Crumpy yeah, had damage. Now he will have to risk it with the subs. He was in a very good place. He was in a very good place. I think he was net P3 at that moment. Probably he just had contact with the back of someone and had some damage on the front wing. It seems like I've that was up on happening. This. Chats picked up on this. Alex, what do you think? Jose Manuel. The hards. And I think this is wrong. I think that there's so much strategy play being shuffled. I, I, I cannot see this being intentional. Maybe there was a mistake. Uh, I don't think it's a, mis a mistake either because we saw Polypunk strolling on eight lap old subs. Everyone saw that. He lost four places. And probably they don't want to, they don't want to risk. It's 11 laps to the end still. But those are qualifying Half subs, are they not? Yeah, they are. They are. But still, I really don't know. I think the hearts work. Of course, they are not as fast as the softs, but they can go to the end, surely. And they will probably have more pace at the end. But someone else started with the mediums. He was not able to put mediums, and well, he only had two choices. One was more safe than the other. And I think that was, well, the explanation from that. All right, confirmation coming through from race control. The safety car is coming in this lap. It's going to be on this lap and driver DMB will be leading. Of course, with the starting mediums, I pick on second place with Thresher, and I think, well, yes, he's the net leader, the net leader, sorry. Wisp on second, and Gabizum on third. Safety car is in. Driver DMB will be controlling on last corner. Oh, he's waving still. Is not going. Oh! oh, oh. That's not. That was that's, magic. That is not good for Wisp and Epic. Wisp has just put Epic into an absolute sling here. Oh, my. Driver. Driver DNB. 
That was uh, that was clever, I have to say. That was a good one. Rackety having a three-second time penalty, battling with Carbon Racer after Rallyon, but the has stays ahead on that sandwich between Mercedes, Epic not being able to take back that second place, which is the net lead at the moment, and Wisp, let's say, it's is leading almost this race, but of course, ten laps to go and a half. We shall not celebrate now. Can I? Is really, really oh. close. Oh my God! Is he ever tight with Cotters right now? That was scary. Oh. And now he's pushing. He's pushing that overtake baron. Colors defending a little bit of contact. He's on Puan. Oh. It's not gonna happen. Oh, what? That's so tight. He went quite far off there to try and keep it wide around the outside. Things are still wheel to wheel between Cotters. Cotters holding right now. Look at this. Polypunk's there as well. Polypunk looking at the McLaren. Fronts to rears. Nothing in it just yet. A little bit wider, probably warning for him. Lars having a mistake at the exit of Sabalo and Colors is just tied at his back. Colors wants that place, but Lars is defending it perfectly. Ooh. Putting the car where he needs to. What a bit of a bump there. Now, this is really, really close. Let's see if Colors jumps there on the inside. He will try Carbon Racer as well, having to slow down, down the things with Rocket C. Colors around the outside, there's a little bit of contact, and Kanai will try it, but Gabizom at the same time is putting the car ahead because Epic had a slide probably at the exit of last corner, and he's lost two places. Kanai there on the inside, and Carbon Racer going really wide at the traction, traction zone of turn one as Lars keeps that eighth place. Oh, Colors. oh my god, Cotter's back row, Polypunk all going wheel to wheel up through Rouge. Polypunk pulling off to the inside, there's contact, this is huge, that's a Ferrari into the wall, Polypunk has gone into the wall, Cotter's. I don't know if... Oh my god, that was a wild exchange coming up the hill. I saw it from Jose Manuel POV and that was contact between Colors and Polypunk. Polypunk was on the grass already. And I think when he come back a little bit, Colors lost the car at the same time and they had contact. They're not out of this race, but out of contention. Can I dark right now? Dark pushing through into ninth position. What battling we're seeing here on the 13th lap. These safety car restarts have really provided a ton of action. Backer a little bit of a nudge on that front left, losing some traction. Crampy saw it. He's looking for position. Maka and Backrow wheel to wheel. Ooh. Not Maka and Backrow. Maka and Epic as Epic pushes through into fourth position. The Ferrari. Has uh oh. There has spawned. He was on P8, I think. He has lost a lot of places. Now down into P14, but Maka and Epic having that exchange on 13 and 14 was beautiful. Maka a little bit of touch there when he was losing that place, but Epic Back is row, crampy. Working. Crampy on the inside as we come through Blanchemont now. Back row on the outside, holding Crampy as Crampy lifts off. He doesn't want to go too much on the throttle through into there, but now it's going to be on the inside as we come through 19 for Crampy, and that is going to be the position taken for him, but a snap on the exit. Does it give Back row the switchback opportunity? No, not yet, but he will have DRS through into Lacombe. He has DRS on Canary because those softs are working perfectly for him. He's now up into P10 after that mistake, penalty, damage that he had to repair. He's flying. Oh, back row, skipping all rally and he lost the rear and had to correct that line, taking a warning surely there for skipping those track limits. Cotter's hunting down Jose Manuel, angling that car to the inside, utilizing battery and, well, everything he's got at his disposal, but not enough to pull the trigger on the Red Bull just yet. This train in serious formation as there's a little bit of a break on the rear of Epic. Epic, not gonna be happy ever have, after having started this race in pole position, dropping back to fourth. Driver in lead of things yet to pit. That's a bit, I don't know what he's waiting. Well, yeah, we, we know what he's waiting. He's waiting for a safety car. But we'll see if it comes and how it will be. And if a lot of drivers will put for soft or will be staying out on those used tires. And our Carbon Racer really putting pressure and Crampy as well putting pressure on Kane. He's flying. Here we he's go. He's flying out of Savala. Look at that. Nothing in it for the McLaren right now. If Crampy has something to say about it, you can see Kane utilizing a bit of that battery to hold off the Williams. Crampy with a serious lunge, a serious push now as we come through into the chicane. Crampy's been making quite a few moves here. And this time, there's just nothing 
that the McLaren can do, and that's just as easy as you like for him, as Kane actually jumps into the pit lane. Crampia 44-044, and you mentioned he's flying, and that's the fastest lap of the campaign. Yeah, probably will be the fastest, unless Kane changed those to the softs. Well, he did change the softs and probably can set a faster one, but right now Crampy is just uh, climbing back on that tower. Next one is Lars, his teammate. I don't think Lars, yep, I don't think Lars will be defending that much. He actually closed the arrest, Lars, to let his teammate by. Crampy up in P8. Here goes back row, Jose Manuel, massive exchanging right now. Back row, wheel to wheel with Jose Manuel. As we come through the calm, there is contact, and that is back row round. Three second time penalty for multiple warnings. I don't know what that was given to Jose for. XWCOM. It was the XWCOM, multiple warnings for track limits. But back row, having to put, well, having to make that exchange, but didn't work for him. He was defending that one actually. And he lost all the front grip with that contact on the side pot of Jose Manuel. Of course, I guess stewards will be looking after that. Polypang really close on back row. We'll try it after back row has been recovering those temperatures to the rears. It seems like back row struggling, of course, Crampy. a little bit after that spin. We're going to jump with Crampy really quick here. Sort of interrupt you there, Alex, as he's on the rear of Carbon Racer. Carbon Racer has been showing some good pace on these hards, but I think it's time for them to die off against the softs because Crampy, with a big lunge through into the chicane, is going to take seventh position. It's a hat trick. <laughs> Three moves on that one, and that's the fastest lap again. Fastest lap for Crampy. It's in a row. Three moves on the same spot. He's on the doing same a spot. ton of work. Seven. Does he have enough to get Rackety into Lacombe? He is showing so much pace in this Williams right now. You can see as the rear wing comes wide open, Rackety has no chance against the Williams here. He's meanwhile closing that gap as well. Crampy, yeah, as you said. No chance for Rackety. Up into P6. Once the next one, and the next one is Maka closing that DRS window already. Down into point nine behind that Mercedes, but as well as, as I was saying, Wisp is really closing that gap but not being able to overtake driver DMB. Grand P6 position closing that one second gap as Rackety has taken a penalty on the exit of No Name. He's being hunted down by Carbon Racer as well, as there's a bit of exchanging between them. Dark takes three seconds, and that's just not what you want to be doing when you're trying to recover through a grid. Gabizim and Epic. Well, something I think happened to Gabizim there. Look at the gap on Gabizim to Epic. Maka really hunting down this Red Bull right now. Why did he have to teleport? I don't know what happened to him, but he. Oh, that's got someone out. Well, not out of this race, but he lost it on the exit of Stavalot as Maka is closing that gap on Gabizim. He doesn't want to try it. Or will he? He's trying, he's preparing the switch back as driver DMB jumps into the pits and Wisp is leading this race. Yeah, you know, these guys, Gabby's and Maka, they got to watch it because they got Crampy just sitting here on the softs and I think he's going to mug the pair of them. Let's take a look. He's so close. Crampy's so close on Maka. And as you said, he can take both of them. He's flying. We will just hope that those subs go to the end. But Maka now attacking Gabizum. Gabizum not being able to. Well, yes, he has the arrest as well. But Maka flying, utilizing that energy. He will put the car on the inside. We'll see if he can keep it together. And it's Here a very good Crampy. move from Maka. Oh, Maka getting it done on Gabizum right now. Everybody tight, 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 holding things in three through five. Crampy biding his time now, a little bit of breathing opportunity, but he doesn't want to just take the time to take a break too long. He wants to get to Epic, and he's got the tires to do a ton of work right now. Gabby's him under major threat. Oh, you saw a great exit there. Crampy not tempting fate down Puan. Risky. Gabby's him went wide, hitting that wall, but I don't think he has damage on that front wing. Crampy's just preparing it. Here's a low flag. That's Kane having an issue on Rochelle's. Probably spinning that car on the inside curb. Very lucky for him, reserving today for tier three. On Semas, please. 
This is where we've seen Krampy really build up some momentum. He's utilized a bit of that battery on exit. Gabby's him on the rear of Maka, nowhere near as close as Krampy. And now I think we might see a lunge into the chicane here. A bit of battery on the entry. He used it, wow. just touching it, but I think he got off to think better of the move. He put his car in Gabby Zim's eyes, and Rackety is coming into the pit lane. With those hearts, I think it's, well, pro probably get those penalties that we're going to demote him to the back of the, the points. Probably not even taking points today, so he just want to put, I think, a new softs for him, as Epic is really close on the lead, but I don't think he will try it now. We have Krampy, Gavizum at the back of Maka. Yeah, surely Maka drops it at the very least one position here. Here goes Gavizum. Ooh, not enough of an opportunity there. And Maka really pushing to hold off Gavizum right now. Krampy hasn't had an answer to these guys yet either. Epic Try bringing in yeah. Wisp. Trevor the Ambitious, the head of Polypunk. With the RS new softs, he's flying. Now into the points. Well, he's DC'd. He's had a disconnection. Oh, yes. Polypunk is going to get this back. That's so unfortunate for him. I think it's the third one. Carbon Racers now had a disconnection as well. Kane and Jose Manuel, they exchange. Gabby Zim, fourth position for him, still crampy, quite tight to the rear, looking for it. The Williams on the hunt. Man, oh man, has he ever put a ton of positions gained on this set of tires, and he's about to make one more. Look at this. Look at this run. The battery and utilization. He's tired of sitting around on the inside as we come through Blanchemont. We've seen a few bad crashes here today, but man, oh man, he will push through just on pace. No DRS and utilization, and he is going to get it into fourth position, just muscling his way through, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Carbon Racer dropping a position as a result of that unfortunate disconnect. We have just crossed into lap 19, and Crampy is looking to hunt down the hard runner of Maka ahead to take a provisional podium position in this race. Racer really, really lucky there. But as you said, Crampy doing that comeback. Oh, he's really close, and he will use the arrest. Dan Erzy, he has not done much. I think Maka has more, but he doesn't have the arrest. He will be vulnerable. Crampy up into P3, and that's another recovery from Crampy. We saw it in Russia. We saw it on Spa, and Crampy's on the podium again. He is showing some great, great craft right now in this race. He's been patient behind Maka and Gabizum, and he has now made it ahead of the pair of them inside of, well, realistically, a sector and a half as he had that great power charge through sector three on lap 18 to take care of Gabizum and now Maka he dispatched him with ease Maka without the DRS on the car in front of him it's been a great race it's not over because Wisp and Epic will start a battle now they've been on those sides 14 laps and 13 respectively and Crampy right now with seven lap old softs he will try to come well to take that gap down it, I think 2.4 seconds it was just before um, we had that uh, those interviews restated. Gabizim, I think, had an issue here. Look at the amount of time he has dropped. Lars is on his rear and hunting quick. There's dirt on those tires coming off of the Red Bull. That is not good for your fifth position, Mr. Gabizim. But Lars, he's struggling. He had to pull off, and Cotters could be in it for some good positions on the softs as well. Yes, Curse on P7 right now doing a perfect job with those softs. Same strategy as Crampy, it seems. They put it in the same lap. Or a lap before. Epic on the rear of Wisp right now, still hunting down the lead as we're on lap 20. DRS in utilization for the Ferrari, not utilizing too much battery right now. And I'll tell you something, there is a significant battery differential between the pair of these two at the front. Jose Manuel, a 42-479, will neutralize that fastest lap point out of the top 10. Yes. Lars Gabizim with an exchange into Lacan. Of course, wants it as well. He's really, really close there. Carbon Racer, we're taking that control of the car. He's going to try to push and gain some places that he has lost the, the bad luck. Right now, on eighth place, uh, only two drivers on the hard compound, and it's both Mercedes. Well, they're in the points so far. It's been pulling off for them. Cotters has Carbon Racer just sitting on his rear right now as well. And a lot of 
those of you watching along pegged these softs and Alex you pegged these softs to really kind of lose some life around now and right now Carbon Racer on 17 lap old hards is keeping pressure with Cotters and look at this we might even see an overtake on these hards that was a sweet back prepared for Carbon Racer now he wants it on the exit of Sabal we'll see if he has a traction to do it the softs seems like they're starting to not work as Cramp is losing time on Epic as well starting the drop Colors low on battery. Carbon Racer knows that he's blinking, he's blinking, he's blinking, and Gavizum is trying it. Gavizum not doing it now on the bus top chicane. He will be waiting for another chance, but it's lap 21. Yeah, it's the penultimate lap of the race, and there's very limited opportunities left on the table for these drivers. Risks are going to be in effect if they weren't already. <laughs> Exactly, now Epic closing that gap down, but he has a lot of battery and he doesn't want to use that much, it seems. Well, well, now... Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you there. No, Gavizum. it's Epic. There we go, Epic, Epic. Oh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I <laughs> thought really maybe, cool. I, I thought he... he... More. Oh, Lars Gabby's in with an exchange here. Cotter's on the rear, nothing doing. Man, Epic had it. I think he doesn't want to utilize everything now. He wants to use everything he can on the last one to not have any answer from his rival but now Hosomaro having well he crashed yeah he... Hosomaro crashed colors on the inside of Lars no safety car is there here it's goes the Carbon Racer two. oh oh my on the inside as we come through Puan is it ever tight it was so so close and epic and wisp as well they were side by side almost there on 13 and 14 yellow flag and that's dark very bad luck for Dark, his teammate passing him by very narrowly there. Now it's Epic on the rear of Wisp, less than two tenths, less than a tenth, dancing in and around Epic. As we are starting now to come through into the final lap of this race, Wisp, a little bit of a, a little bit of a rubber band there, a little bit of a desync, which is something you hate to see in these battles. But man, oh man, I gotta tell you, Epic has showing 100. thrilling pace on the rear of Wisp as he has been able to conserve massive battery you are looking at the pole sitter of this race in the ferrari trying to hunt back down a race win on the swedish driver of wisp here we go it's gonna be really really close but i think epic has this he has a lot of battery he only needs a good exit he has kept it there as we have a yellow flag i think it's driver dmb reconnecting again look at that battery disposal is the rs oh wisp is protecting but there's a space for one car and epic is going through now on Camel, it's ahead on Lake Hall and Wisp is on second place, but I pick, it seems like he's going to take this win. It's lap 22 out of 22. That was a beautiful move. It was a tough move as well. Wisp not wanting to give him all the space in the world there, giving him a good squeeze off to that outside, but clean through into Lacombe. And now our timings have disappeared on us. We have some exchanging going on on this final lap, but it is all for the race win between Epic and Wisp. Maka and Crampy are fighting for third position as well. Maka dispatched the Williams, and this is not good for Crampy. And I'll tell you something. You know why this is happening? I think it's the softs, Alex. I think you were right. I think these hards just have so much on them that the softs aren't able to keep up. And this is just horrid for you if you're a Williams fan right now. Be losing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot on traction, on on grip, and you can see it. Mac already one second and a little bit more ahead, but all eyes glued on Epic. What a race he has done. It's been a superlative drive for the Ferrari, all things said and done, and man, oh man, wow. The number 70 Ferrari, it's epic. It's been an epic race for him, and it is going to be the checkered flag to take the win. Wisp will cross second, and now Maka and Crampy. What a race they had in this one. It will be Maka ahead of the Williams as Crampy finishes fourth, and Gabizim will round out the top five. Crampy will finish sixth, Carbon Racer in seventh, Polypunk in eighth, Rackety crosses in ninth. However, it will be Polypunk that pushes in front of him. Man, oh man, what a race. We have, we have seen an amazing, an amazing performance from Epic Wisp. Mac as well, at the end of this race, taking some places with those hearts. And we missed a battle there at the end. It was Carbon Racer and Colors. Colors defending on Blanchimon. Carbon Racer just on the back. Colors, I think he went on the outside of Bus Stop Chicane. And then he cut it back, but Carbon Racer tried the switch back. 
colors blocked the apex and took that place. It was a fantastic battle from then. Colors six po uh, sorry sixth place, Wisp on second place, and that's an amazing uh, job for the Alfa Romeo team as well. A very fun race that one. We're gonna have interviews hopefully with our top three in just a moment, and then a raid for the community. And then, of course, we have the Tier 1 Americas Division later this evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's 2 a.m. for those of you in the U.K. or 3 a.m. Well, for all of our friends in Central Europe. But, man, what a race. There it is. The podium. Ferrari is on top. And it was a great, great race overall, I think, for Epic, having taken pole and coming through with a good win. And you have two Swedish drivers there on the top steps. So that's pretty good as well. Happy Shirley, Wisp sec another 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 podium. I think he took one on Zambord. His this is might be his second. He'll be happy as well. Maka, probably the first one on this season. And Crampy again doing another recovery from the back after damage, serving penalties, pit stops under safety car, putting those stops and then flying, but lost one place that cost him the podium. Yeah, there was there was a lot a lot of, of of intensity. We saw a lot of overtakes, a lot from Crampy, a lot from Epic as well that had some mistakes. Uh or probably some connection issues because he teleported back, I think, a couple of places. But he has done an amazing job to recover and, and put some show there. His spa is a is a very good is a very good track and we have seen that it's it's been proved. Uh, yeah, hello. I'm really tired, so my English will not be the, do, be the best, but uh, yeah, finally I win. Uh, from my point of view, I should already have two, two wins, but uh, yeah, finally. I am happy that I fin finally got it. Yeah. 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 Sorry about that. My mic muted for the stream. My apologies. I was just asking Epic about his race. One thing I'll say, of course, Monza next week. Very fast track. Are you excited for yeah. that? Home track for the Ferraris? Yeah, it's the home track. Um, I really like Monza because it's so fast and uh, many overtakes opportunities. And uh, yeah. Well, congratulations on the win, Epic. It was a great, great Thank race. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you. you next week. Any messages for the viewers? Um, no, I don't think so. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. All right. Thank you, Epic. Thanks for racing today and congrats. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. All right. That was Epic, everybody. We're going to speak to now. I think we'll go to Maka, our third position finisher, as he is now available. Welcome, Maka, to the commentary booth. What a race in the end for you. What a charge in the end. You took Crampy out of third, and I have to I have to ask, how does that feel to be doing that in spa at the end of a race like this? Yeah, it feels good. Uh I didn't really expect Crampy to uh his tires to drop off that much at the end, but you know. It was a thrilling race. It was Alex called it. Alex, you called it with the tires. Really did. Do you have any questions or anything for Maka? 
was a really interesting strategy. Only the Mercedes were with the hearts at the end of that race. Did you guys saw that coming? Did you guys, well, think that the hearts were gonna have some pace at the end compared to the others? Yeah, yeah. I was just hoping for uh, all the other drivers' tires to drop off, which they did at the end. So it was a fantastic one because, uh, of course, you really don't know. It was it was gonna be tied between softs and hearts. Uh, we saw Crumpy having an amazing pace, and then after that, you took that uh, place. It was on the Camel Straight, I think. We didn't see it on stream. How was that move? Yeah, it, it felt good, but um, you know, congrats to the winners and everything. It's it's very good race, very fun. Well, thank you, Maka, for taking the time to interview, and we will hope to see you next week in Monza for a good race again. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That was Mac, everybody. Now joining us will be our second position finisher, finally, Mr. Wisp. Hello, hello, hello. How are you feeling after a very up-and-down Belgian Grand Prix? You've had some good finishes here previously. So let's talk about it. How are you feeling? 22 laps, second position. I'm good. All right, that was Wisp, everybody, and that is going to conclude our interviews. He's good after that one. Great race from Wisp, and didn't appear that he wanted to say anything else about the race. So, well, with that, Alex, Monza next week. How are you feeling for the next round? It's going to be really, really interesting. Those curves at the exit of Ascari at the entry as well can provide a lot, a lot of incidents. We hope... Tier 3 drivers really practice that track because you really need to. You really need to. We don't want to see those incidents, or at least the minimal. But I think we can see a lot of good racing as we have always seen there on Italy. Definitely, definitely. And that is going to drop up our, of course, <laughs> that is going to wrap up the Tier 3 racing. We have the Tier 1 Americas division later this evening. Tomorrow, we have the Tier 2 racing. And then Thursday, we have the Tier 1 action. And then we'll have the Endurance Series around Italy this coming weekend as well. Okay. What a fantastic race. The replay is going to be on YouTube. And I think we might just have to make a clip out of that big collision that we saw through Sector 3. But, of course, everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the stream tonight. My name is Strifium here from Canada. Joining me was Mr. Alex Bitto all the way from Spain. And we're going to jump in with the raid. And, of course, raid a member of the fantastic F1 community. Of course, massive shout-out to our great partners, Phytron Software, exclamation Phytron in the chat. You can check them out. And then you have, well, thanks to Crampy with the raid tonight. Thank you to everybody else who hit that follow button. And it's really, really nice to have all the support that we get on a regular basis. We'll see you later for the America's Tier 1 Division. And it just allows the Ferrari to just breeze past the Renault. Horseman is in the lead of things on the last lap. He's all over the gearbox of the Avatari. Matt slowing down to let these guys. Vickers got into the back of the back marker. He's out. Really tight. There's a move. Here goes Dirk on the inside into turn one. A little bit of a bump. There's a big issue. There's a massive snap. Cactus is off. Dirk has just slid all the way into turn two. But Yap is obviously pushing right now. He's using a lot of ERS here. He wants to get this move done as quickly as he physically can, and he does get the move. This can be really dangerous on turn three on the outside, goes Adam. It's a very good move. The engines are revving, the lights are on, the look down to turn one is giving these hearts an extra beat, Unicorn, and things are about to go dark. Big goes on hell on the inside into turn one on the race, but look at the traction strip. And as Azir now weaving across the line is gonna take the win here in Montreal. Don't tell me he's going to go for it. Oh, yes, he is. What a move, Unicorn. Put that to music. Here we go. The Misfits are back.